Welcome back, my name is Cheyenne and I'm the owner of Just Pole Fitness Studios and I've been an instructor for six years. So today I'm going to take you through some base work tricks, in particular kips. This is going to be part of a base work trick series, so stay tuned for more videos. But for today, I'm going to take you through these three different kips that you can do either on a static or spinning pole. For today, I'm going to be doing these tricks on a static pole just so that I can be facing the front and the pole doesn't turn as I teach these tricks, but I have done them all on a spinning pole as well. So let's get into it. We're going to start off with our fan kick into kip. Now, when you do this, there's two hand grips that you can choose. It's just going to depend on what feels comfortable for you. There is no wrong or right. So the first grip option is forearm on the pole, outside hand on top, or you can go both hands in this position. I don't recommend a split grip because it's not going to work for what we do, and it may put a little bit too much pressure on that bottom arm. So. I'll be doing the forearm grip uh, with top hand high. Now, when you do this, any forearm position, you want to make sure that the forearm is on a diagonal and it is pressing into the pole. You don't want it neutral or to the other side because it will just slip away and won't give you that pushing power. Now, when I go into this super important push with the bottom arm, the top arm pull the pole down into the ground to make sure that shoulder and lat is engaged. Now, when I go into this, my outside leg, so no matter what side you are doing, your outside leg will be where your weight will be distributed to start off with. So all weight in that outside leg because your inside leg is going to lead your fan kick. Now to go into your fan kick, you will swing up with that inside leg and it will go up and over. Imagine you're creating a rainbow with the leg, so inside leg, then outside leg to follow. But what you want to be mindful of is that you create a big open V so that your fan, fan kick looks really big and dramatic. So instead of closing off, so little fan kick, yeah, see how it's quite tight? We wanna open nice and wide. So weight on the outside leg, inside leg swings over, little crunch through the belly to allow the hips to lift and open up, um, you know, the, these hips to create a big fan kick. Um, and then again, don't forget the big V in the middle. So I will place my weight on that right leg, kick up with that inside leg, open, V and drop, okay? So that's going to be your fan kick. Tutorials on that are coming soon, but going into the kip from this position. When you kick over with your inside leg, what you want to do is not let it touch the ground. You want to stop it here. Now, continue the fan kick with the outside leg and with the leg that is paused here, you're going to swing the outside leg over and you're going to hit your heels together. When your heels hit together over here, so on this side, you're going to tuck both knees in, turn your body, release the pole and drop. If you're starting out and you find this a little bit scary, you can keep the hands on the pole, but it is going to be a little bit more dynamic if you let go of the pole sooner. So going through that next step, and that will be the little clack. So I do my fan kick, the legs stop over here, and they clack in that position there, so on that diagonal. Now adding on the third step where I lift the knees in and I turn into the pole. So I turn towards that bottom hand, lift, then I'll drop. So that third step, fan, clack, lift, drop, down to your knees. 
Okay, let's do that one more time. So big fan, clack them together on the diagonal without them touching the ground. Pick both feet up and turn your body. So clack, lift, turn, drop. One more time, step outside leg, inside leg will swing over, big V, clack, turn and drop. And that is your fan kick into kip. So taking you through the next kip. Now we are going to be jumping up into this and then dropping down to our knees. So there's two ways you can do this. You can jump up first, then cross over to drop, or you can just go from the second part, crossover, drop to knees. So what we're going to do, I'll be doing the jump first, but you can choose where you wanna start. When I go into my jump, literally jumping up, but when I do this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the legs back. Imagine you're trying to kick your head with your feet. So you want to arch your back, bring the head back and lift the feet towards your head. Now, when you do this, you're going to hold onto the pole, have the hands low, not too high, so you don't pull through the shoulders and also block off your face if you are going to be putting this in any of your performances. So I'm going to jump up, back. Now, other thing to be mindful of is if you don't jump back and curve through the spine, you're going to hit your cookie on the pole. <laughs> know what else to call it but you'll hit it on the pole and it's quite uncomfortable so super important that when you're jumping it's back and arch so that your tummy or chest goes onto the pole first so we jump hands eyesight height head back feet to head one now to go into the next part we are going to cross the legs over and clack them together. So the move by itself, hands, we wanna keep them nice and low because um, we're going straight from the jump anyway. We're going to cross the legs over. I swing them round and clack. So one, two. So this angle, one, two. Then to go into the kip from this, so the third part of this, when you go to bring the feet back, you're going to tuck them under and you're going to drop straight to your knees. Now a good tip when doing this, don't tuck the feet too much because your knee will take the load of the drop. Luckily, I am wearing Tatiana Active knee pads and you feel absolutely nothing, but if you don't have Tatiana Active knee pads, I have done it in other knee pads, but you do feel a little bit of pressure, whereas the Tat Active ones, they do take the load. If you haven't got a pair, I do recommend getting them. Um, but when you land, have the feet slightly below the knee so that your boots or sandals take the impact of the, the drop first. So if I had to put these next two parts together from the cross, it's one, two. Now, to put all three of those moves together, we go back, we cross over, then I'm going to, as soon as my feet clack, tuck under with the foot slightly extended below the knee so it takes the impact and I drop. When I drop, I release the pole because I don't want to land with my knees close to the pole if I accidentally pull in. So, step one, step two, three. Yeah, one more time. Step one, big back arch. One, two, three. And that's your second kip. Now, I'm going to take you through our third kip. Now, this one is a little bit easier. So if you're just starting out with kips, this is a good option to do. There's two ways that this can be done. It can be, for, it's from your downward dog position. You can opt to have your feet in a pike or your feet slightly apart. It won't matter too much, it's whatever feels comfortable for you. So I'm placing my hands down, 
fingers splayed for stability. When I push up, I'm pushing my hands into the ground to engage the shoulder, so big, strong push. As I lift my legs, like I said, two options, pike with the legs together, or you can go into that downward dog position where the legs are also apart. When I do this, I push my chest through so that I know my whole upper body is engaged in this position. You wanna make sure that you're lifting your bum as high as possible so that you get a nice V. Now from there, you're going to jump, tucking the knees in and just landing straight on those feet and knees. Same thing like our second one, the feet need to be slightly extended so that they take the impact of the drop. So if I'm going from my pike position, I push up, V, and then I'm going to little bend through the knees to bring both feet up, tuck, and drop. Still cute. <laughs> you just wanna make sure, like I said, that those feet are landing first, takes the impact off those knees. Now the other one is where the feet are slightly apart. Again, personal preference. If I am doing my feet slightly apart, I like to bring both feet in so that they clack a little bit before landing down because I'm into that dynamic life. <laughs> so going into the V, feet slightly apart for this one. Now as I come in, I clack my feet together in the tuck, then I drop here. Okay, so one more time with that one. Up, drop. And that is your third kip in our first videos of our base work kip series.